Lord, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We ask for another Sunday morning the Lord has made. Another day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Thank God for you logging on. Thank God for new beginnings. Your present with this morning. Just we say clothed and in our right minds. Standing here before the presence of the Lord. Seeking and desiring his help, his graciousness, his mercy, uh, everlasting love and kindness. We just thank God for being such an awesome God. We have another simple lesson this morning uh, by the help of the Lord and the power of the Holy Ghost. Lesson title this morning, Trust in the Lord. Amen. Trust in the Lord. And that is our uh, that is our simple charge. And sometimes the Bible says we miss it because of the simplicity in Christ. But our charge is simply to trust in the Lord. And so we thank you for logging on. Hit that. We appreciate your views. Continue to view. View us on YouTube. Uh, hit the subscribe button. Hit the like. Thumbs up. Do whatever it takes to keep, amen, our communication together. Before we get started, we're going to have a, a word of prayer this morning with our hands. The gracious and heavenly Father, in the precious name of Jesus, Lord, we come this morning just thanking you once again for your tender mercy and your kindness. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to share in your word, to break the bread of life unto your people, Lord God. We thank you for your salvation. For the work that you've done in your body. We thank you, Lord God, for sending your son to save us, Lord God, to propitiate our sins, to deliver us, Lord, from the power of darkness, Lord, and bring us into your marvelous light. And we just thank you, Lord. We praise you, we glorify you. And it's in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This morning, our lesson is entitled uh, Trust in the Lord. And our focus verse is coming out of uh, Psalms 18 and Two. And we're going to break that down real slow because there's a lot of things in Psalms 18 and 2 that we want to talk about that David, uh, as David, this is the Psalm of David, and, how, and as David begins to uh, call on the Lord uh, for deliverance. And so we have, to, we have to trust in the Lord for deliverance. Amen. And so this morning, and, and if we uh, can revert back to creation, like, uh, it's amazing how I, 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 I find in, in a lot of the lessons, and pretty much, yeah, a lot of the lessons, we can always revert back to creation, to the beginning. And this one is another one that reflects that we just simply, if Adam and Eve would have just simply trusted in the Lord, and so, as far as we are from creation, uh, it's, it's, we have really not yet still evolved as people. Mm -hmm. But we are still in the same place. Trust in the Lord. So that's what we're dealing with today. Trust in the Lord. Uh, Psalms 18 and 2. And it reads, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, mm -hmm. my buckler, and the horn of my salvation, and my high tower. Psalms 18 and 2. And that's what we're dealing with. We're going to break that down a little bit. Now, that word trust is described as it pertains to this lesson today. Amen. It is uh, to be firm, faithful, be confident or sure. Assurance, hope for inward certainty to entrust, believe, and catch this, believe in the reliability, truth, ability, or strength of. Mm -hmm. It also says commit someone or something to the safekeeping of. So this is what we're saying this morning. This is what we're saying this morning. Trust in the law. Mm -hmm. And as far as our salvation and as far as our deliverance, 
We can't trust in horses or chariots. We can't trust in uncertain riches. We can't trust in that. We can't trust in the flesh. As far as our salvation and as far as our deliverance go, we have to trust in the Lord. Because uh, they, as David come to find out, he's, he's, he's my rock, he's our rock, he's our fortress, he's our deliverer. Most importantly, he's our God. He's our strength. And so in whom I will trust, he's my buckler, mm -hmm. and he's the horn of my salvation. I like that one. Mm -hmm. And my high tower. So that's what we're dealing with today, this morning. And so we encourage you to trust in the Lord. Because the Bible declared that in order for us to be justified of God, we have to walk by faith. We have to live by faith. So we have to trust in the Lord. And this Psalm of David is, is a song of David. It's a praise of David because David had a lot of enemies. Mm -hmm. And David had a number one enemy, which was Saul. And Saul chased David probably half of his life to destroy him. And so David had to, uh, he had to trust in the Lord for his, his for everything, his safety. When he closed his eyes at night, or when he woke up in the morning, and he had, you have to hear, understand what the Spirit is saying to the church. We have to trust in the Lord. David had to trust in the Lord mm -hmm. to the fact that when uh, things would happen in David's life, David would go before the Lord and pray and ask the Lord, should he pursue after that? Or how should he handle that? Mm -hmm. And the Lord would tell him pursue, or the Lord would tell him no, or whatever. Because David trusted in the Lord. Mm -hmm. And this is how we have to also trust in the Lord. Mm -hmm. Uh, God has sent his only son, his only begotten son, to sacrifice his life, to die for our sins, to reconcile, to redeem us back to God. Mm -hmm. We have to trust in that process. We have to trust in that. We cannot uh, slip at any time and, and think salvation is predicated on our goodness, mm -hmm. on our righteousness. I remember uh, Peter, I believe it was John, the Bible said they were going to the temple with the hour of prayer, and there was a man there begging of alms, and uh, he wanted alms of them, and Peter told the man, you know, uh, look, look up on us. He said, silver and gold have we not. He said, but such as we have, give I unto thee in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, rise up and walk. Yes. And the man, he, he, he trusted in that word, believed in that word, and he rose up and he was able to walk. Mm -hmm. And then and Peter goes on to say, after the, after the people had seen the man uphold and whatnot, Peter, Peter had gone on to say, uh, look, look, you know, it was not by our power or our, by our holiness that this man, you see this man hold. Amen. It says, because that man had faith in the name in whom we called him. Yes. You have to learn to trust in the Lord. He is 18 and 2 said, he is, our, he is my rock. Yes. He is my fortress. And the list goes on. Faith in Jesus Christ. It, it's simply, the Bible says simply faith in whom God has sent. That's the scripture. Mm -hmm. Simply faith in whom God has sent. And he told his disciples, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And you should know the truth. He said, and the truth to make you free. So let me get in. Let me get on. Uh, my time is running. But we still speaking the word of God. Mm -hmm. uh, Psalms 18 and 2. And so we're going to break that down a little bit. That He said, the Lord is my rock. And my fortress. Now that word fortress, David discovered that the Lord was uh, his fortification. The Lord was his defender. Mm -hmm. You have to understand the reasons why we must trust 
in the Lord because he is our he is our fortification he is our defender he is our mediator he is our uh, he's man I don't know, it's just so much that Jesus is <clears throat> so why would we trust in any other any other thing mm -hmm. and so David found this out because like I said David had a lot of enemies and David cried out to the would cry out to the Lord for deliverance. And he come to find out that the Lord is his fortress. He said, he's my deliverer. The Lord is my deliverer. The Lord is our deliverer. Your deliverer, my deliverer. Mm -hmm. And deliverer says to make safe, to, to free, or to redeem. He's our deliverer. He redeemed us from sin. Yeah. And being redeemed from sin means that we don't have to be condemned with the world. The judgment is coming up on the sin of this world. And, and by trusting in the Lord, he, he redeemed us from the upcoming judgment on this world. We don't have to be condemned with this world. Mm -hmm. Trust in the Lord. David found out that trusting in the Lord, that he was, the Lord was his strength. Mm -hmm. And that strength is, uh, he found out that the Lord was his ability, that the Lord was his power, that the Lord was his authority. Yes. This is what David found out by trusting the Lord. You and I have, you and I have the same discovery. When we trust in the Lord, we come to find out that he is our ability. Mm -hmm. He is our power. He is our authority. You know the testimony of David while he was tending to the sheep. He got it, a, a bear came tried to take the sheep. A lion came and tried to take the sheep. And just uh, David and the call of his life. Mm -hmm. And he went back and recovered the sheep from that bear, from that lion. Amen. With, with his bare hands. Why? Because of the anointing, the call on his life. More importantly, the trusting in the Lord. Amen. And so by the time he came to uh, Goliath, the giant, he couldn't believe basically the fear of his brethren, the, the, the Israelites. He couldn't believe the fear on them because his testimony basically was saying that he, he had, he said, I come in the name of the Lord. I've already trusted the Lord in, in my life. Mm -hmm. So when we are going through this life and we're not trusting the Lord, then we're paralyzed by our test and trial as mm -hmm. the children of Israel were. Uh, Goliath was down there calling them out. Goliath had even defiled their God and not one of them moved, not even King Saul. Mm -hmm. When we're not trusting in the Lord going through this life, our tests and our trials, our challenges, they paralyze us. Amen. Slow down, let's chew that up a little bit. But when your testimony is trusting in the Lord, then you realize that there is nothing that is too hard for the Lord. Amen. And that he will never leave you, nor will he forsake you. Amen. And he said, Lo, I'll be there always until the end. Mm -hmm. David understood that. This is why we encourage you this morning, trust in the Lord. David found out that he was, that the Lord was his buckler. What is a buckler? He found out the Lord was his small shield, his large shield. He found out the Lord was his surrounding shield. Mm -hmm. He found out that the Lord right. was his shield. Amen. Small matters, large matters, <laughs> didn't matter. The Lord was his shield. He found out that the Lord was his horn. And I like this one. Because the horn, which is a meta metaphorically use, is metaphorically use of the word signifying strength. The, the, the text say, the Lord is the horn of my salvation. In other words, David come to understand that the Lord was the strength of his salvation. Oh, right. The Lord was the strength of his deliverance. It wasn't him, it was the Lord. Amen. You and I must understand 
The strength of our salvation is not us, us is the Lord. The Bible said that uh, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Mm -hmm. David come to find out that uh, the Lord was the horn of his salvation. The Lord was the strength of his deliverance. Mm -hmm. He also found out that the Lord was a high tower. Mm -hmm. He's talking about Psalms 18 and 2. That the Lord is his high tower. And he comes to understand that God is a high tower that stands high above all that is. Mm -hmm. God is a high tower that stands high above all that is. Yes. All that is. God is above it. Mm -hmm. the, the elevation of his thoughts and motives, he is to see our every move. God sees and knows the intent of our heart from afar off. Yes. Mm -hmm. Why could you trust in a God like this? Mm -hmm. he, he, he stands high. One scripture say he sits high and he looks low. And he also sees the enemy from a far away. He also, because he's in high tower, not only is he above all that is, but he sees our he sees our hearts, the intent of our hearts from afar off. Yes. In other words, he knows what we have need of before we even ask. Yes. He sees our enemy from afar off. This is why the uh the wisdom of Solomon in Proverbs 3 and 5 is where we go next. This is why he would say, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. Don't lean to your own knowledge. Don't lean into your own knowledge. Mm -hmm. Trust in the Lord. Mm -hmm. Trust in the Lord because the Lord is our fortress. He's our deliverer. He's our strength. He's our buckler. He's the horn of our salvation. He's our salvation. He's our deliverance. And he's our high tower. This is why the wisdom of Solomon in Proverbs 3 and 5 said, trust in the Lord and lean not to your own understanding. Lean not to your own knowledge. Trust in the Lord. Psalm 51 and 7 says, be merciful unto me, O God. Be merciful unto me for my soul trusteth in thee. Yeah, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge until these calamities be overpassed, or these calamities be gone. Yes. When you're in the midst of a situation, right. you have to learn to trust in the Lord. Yes. And the writer says, uh, keep me under your wings until these calamities be passed over to these situations, mm -hmm. to these issues, to these tests, these trials, be, be, be passed over. Keep me under your wings. Keep me protected. Mm -hmm. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Psalms 125 and 1 says, They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, but abide forever. When we trust in the Lord, we're like that, that we're like that house that was built on the rock. The psalmist said, they that trust in the Lord yes. shall be like, be like Mount Zion, which cannot be removed. When we trust in the Lord, we'll be like that house that's built on the foundation. Yes. That when the storm comes, the wind comes and blow, mm -hmm. and the Bible says beat up on the house, the house stood mm -hmm. because it's built on a firm foundation. In other words, because you trust in the Lord. You trust in the Lord. We're not moved. We're like Mount Zion. We're not removed. We're not moved. Uh, Psalm 62 and 8 says, Trust in him at all times, ye people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us all. Say lot. Pause on it right there. Meditate on that. Think about that. Say lot. Pause. God is a refuge for us. He's a refuge for us. He's a, he's a hiding place. Mm -hmm. He's a high tower. He's a strong tower. He's the place where we can rest in him. His word, his word is infallible. And the Bible says by, by two of these immutable proofs, 
God which cannot lie, cannot lie. We can trust in the word of God. He is, uh, he is our refuge. He is our refuge. Stand on the word. Believe the word. Uh, let us go to uh, 1 Timothy. I want to go to 1 Timothy uh, 4 and 6. First Timothy four and six. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, first Timothy four and ten. First Timothy four and ten says, For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach, because we trust in the living God, who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. Mm -hmm. There it is. Uh, faith and trust is all is almost interchangeable. Faith and trust is almost interchangeable. Understand what Paul is telling Timothy. He said we 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 both labor and suffer reproach. We, in other words, we we gonna go through it. We gonna go through it. He said because we trust in the living God who is the savior of all men, even those that are giving you problems, even those that are giving you fits, don't understand that the Lord is, is, is their savior. Yeah. The Bible said if they would, if they would, if they would have knew that they were persecuting, persecuting the prince of life, they wouldn't have did it. Men don't understand, they don't know. The same ones that's persecuting you and, and making you suffer reproach and go through this, the Lord is their Savior also. But here's the catch. The completion of that scripture says, especially of those that believe. That's the problem. If they were believers, or if they were born again, they wouldn't persecute you. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to argue with people and understand. People that persecute you, people that give you problems, mm -hmm. even if they claim to be in church. Amen. The Bible says uh, they don't believe Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Woo! Boy, this is man. He begin to start peeling his word back, and nobody, nobody got to judge him. Jesus said, "I didn't." Jesus said, "I, I didn't come to judge you." He said, "There's one that judges. That's the word of God. The word of God is the judge. Mm -hmm. Word of God is the measuring stick." And so, First uh, Timothy verse six says. If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, whereunto thou hast attained, seven. But refuse profane and old wide fables, and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. Don't stand up there and teach profane and old wide fables. That's not the gospel. Amen. Uh, verse 8, for bodily exercise profits little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. Verse 9. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all accept acceptation. We just read 10. For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God. This is acceptable unto God that we endure hardness, mm -hmm. that we suffer and and we labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God right. who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. Verse 11. These things command and teach. These things command and teach. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. We, we're going to suffer. We're going we're gonna to suffer reproach. We're going to suffer persecution because we trust in the living God. That is that is uh, our calling. That is our calling. Ministers have to teach that. I, I have to give you that understanding. Mm -hmm. You have an adversary that's not that 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 don't want to see you complete the work. That don't want to see you complete your, your call, your race. Hebrews tw uh, two and thirteen. Hebrews two and thirteen says. 
And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I and the children which God has given me. That when you when you read that, uh, In its entirety, which we're not going to read it in its entirety, uh, you'll understand he's talking about he's talking about Jesus. Yeah. He's talking about Jesus. And again, I will put my trust in him. He's talking about Jesus. Jesus, Jesus is talking about the, the Lord. And again, behold, I and the children which God has given me. All of us that the, that all of us that Jesus has died for. God has given him. And so he had to put his trust in God. <clears throat> so if Jesus has to put his trust in God, where do you think our trust got to go? Mm -hmm. And that's faith in Jesus Christ. Faith, faith in Jesus Christ is putting your trust in the Lord. So like it is always, we encourage you to repent of your sin. Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of them and allow the Lord to fill you with the Holy Ghost. As the body of Christ, body of baptized believers, we have to trust in the Lord yes. with all of our heart. Scripture say, and lean not, this is the wisdom of the preacher, this is the wisdom of Solomon, and lean not to our own understanding or to our own knowledge. And a lot of us, we, we're tripped up right there because we put more, we put probably a little too much confidence in our knowledge. But when this, when, but when this pertains to salvation and to eternal life, our knowledge don't, don't compare because God has set salvation, redemption, and deliverance and all this stuff in order from the foundation of the world. Mm -hmm. So some knowledge that I gain later in life, it doesn't compare uh, in the plan of salvation. It will help me survive and enjoy the things in this life. But then the Bible also lets you know that uh, not only does knowledge puff up, he said, but where there's knowledge, one day it'll fade. He said, where there's tongues, one day they're going to cease. Mm -hmm. He said, love is the only thing that don't fail. Mm -hmm. So you have to trust in the Lord with all that heart. We pray that you got something out of it. Before we let you go, let us pray. We bow in. Be gracious in heavenly Father, in the precious name of Jesus. Lord, we come this morning just thanking you once again for the visitation of your spirit, Lord God. We thank you for your word. We pray that you will continue to lead us in God with your truth. We know that thy word is true. That you will continue to be our rock, our, our fortress, our strength our buckler, our shield, and we would continue to trust in you for we know, Lord, that you died for our sins and you come to redeem us back to God. And we ask that you would just continue to lead us and guide us, be there for us, supply the need according to your riches and glory, according to uh, our, our desire, Lord. We praise you and we glorify you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.